Hi, my name is Steve Brostowitz. I'm a teacher in transitional kindergarten, kindergarten and first grade. Today I'm going to talk to you about some games to teach three-dimensional shapes in kindergarten. It's time for your three-dimensional game. What you need is a flat surface. You can take a broken down box, you can take a trifold or a styrofoam board, and you set it up on anything you want, a stool, a container, what have you. And then you start to get objects out. Kids, what's this? Cylinder. What do you think it's going to do when I put it on the ramp and let go? Is it going to stand? And they're voting with their hand gestures. Is it going to slide down or is it going to roll down? And the kids vote. And you can keep track of that on the board. And again, you can have scribes come up and it's incentive for them to come up. And you put the shapes down here, roll, slide, or stand, and it's popular vote that wins out. And then for an extension piece, you can have someone timing it to see how long it takes down and have kids take es estimates. And again, you're going to have number writing and recognition practice. And it's up to you whether or not you want kids writing at boards at their own seat. Uh, with this, it's, it's such a high interest activity, you don't have to worry about the kids fiddling around with the boards and the markers as much because their attention is always drawn back here. And then you test different things. Well, what's this? It's a cone. What's it going to do when I let go? One, two, three. Oh, it slid. Now. What happens if your ramp's only this high? One, two, three. Oh, it stood. Now let's make a prediction. How high am I going to have to lift it until it moves? And then you go, thumbs up when you think it's going to slide. And they say, let's say most of the kids stay here. And then you go, let's see if our prediction was correct. And see how all along we're embedding the language of science and math into the assignment. They get lots of repetitions with saying the shape names and they also get to use things like higher, lower, force, speed. And again, kids with more advanced knowledge and cognitive understanding of these processes can make predictions and hypotheses that are more, uh, more in depth. And then you could say, What's, what sphere is going to get down faster? And you can also you can entice kids to sit on the carpet crisscross applesauce by saying, you can come up and hold the objects and you can be the official person to let go. So always finding ways to participate for the kids and making sure it's contingent on their behavior. Ooh, what's this? As you trim off the bottom with scissors. That's a cone. Who thinks they can make a cone at their seat? And you give one kid who has demonstrated the ability to do this in the past an opportunity to get that hands-on experience, or maybe a couple kids. Let's see if they can do it. Ooh, we just did a sphere. Who thinks they can make a sphere and show us how to make a sphere? Again, giving multiple opportunities for the kids to participate and multiple opportunities for the kids to use the language of three-dimensional shapes. You just saw some good games for teaching three-dimensional shapes in kindergarten. I'll see you next time.